So this is a quick tip uh, for Haley on Facebook who wants to know how can you modify the connectors between the letters on your design? Now, the real answer to that depends on really what type of lettering it is. Because uh, while you might have a real lettering object as it's reflected here, and it's an actual lettering object using a font, there are other objects that look like lettering, but are just uh, manually digitized patch, patches that are sequenced to look like, like lettering. Now, when you look at your design on screen, the first thing to confirm is are you actually displaying your connectors correctly on screen? And there's two ways to do that. There's this show functions icon here, but then there's this connectors icon here. Sometimes it might be off by default, so it looks like you don't have any connectors whatsoever. So make sure that that is turned on and make sure that that is also turned on. And with your true view turned off, you'll get everything you need to identify whether you've got your connectors on by the travels and by the symbols displaying here as well. Now in this top example, um, this is a lettering object. So modifying the connectors within lettering is a bit different to uh, regular manually digitized patches that you might make. Because in Wilcom, your connectors are, are configured either inside an object or after an object. Now in the case of lettering, while it looks like it's made up of lots of different little objects, collectively it's one object. Just this one item here. If I make that blue, you can see it's now separate to the other objects that are red here. It is one lettering object. So to modify the connectors in this particular um, object here, you'd have the object selected. It's a lettering object. You'd click on connectors. And you can see there's a couple of options here, after object or inside object. Because it is one object, lettering object, I want to modify the connectors inside the object. So I change it to inside. And from here, you get all the choices to modify the connector values within here. In my particular object, I have it uh, trimming if the next connector is greater than two millimeters, meaning my gap from, uh, let's say, here to here is greater than two mil, then trim. Uh, in this case here, it's probably less than two mil because it's one and a half, so it isn't trimming. So there's a couple of ways I can modify that. Well, I can select it and I can say, well, always trim and it will get rid of all of them or never trim. And it will do that whole design without stopping and trimming once, which you might want to make it run a bit faster. Um, now they will be showing on your design. So there's another trick to try to hide those connectors. By default, it's jumping, meaning it's doing one stitch from here straight over to here. If you turn it on to run, you can now see it performing small little penetrations. It's doing a run stitch between those two spaces here. Previously, it was one long jump stitch, and now it's doing a run stitch. There's every chance that that, that run stitch could pull in a little bit more on your fabric and be hidden or sink into the fabric. Uh, a big long jump stitch you're probably going to notice that jumping between your, your two letters. So you might want to change it to run, and then it's going to perform a small little run stitch between each of your designs. So that's how you basically turn them on and off. You can either set it to always trim, never trim, or trim if greater than 2 mil, or any value, so maybe greater than 6 mil. With that value set, it won't trim until my lettering spacing is greater than 6 mil, Not quite. Now that gap there is greater than six mil, it's gonna trim between those two. Um, so they're the bunch of values that you can play around with. But the first thing is to establish is, is it a lettering object? Then you wanna mo modify inside. If it's not a lettering object, then you're not modifying inside, you're modifying after. So if I come down to these individual patches and I want to change the connector value between these two areas here because at the moment it's trimming as indicated by the triangle and jumping across, then I select that object, I change it to after in my connector tab and then I've got the same rules again. I can make it always trim or never trim or trim if longer than six mil. But keep in mind when you do modify these settings, you may also want to modify your tie in and tie off values because if it does trim, you absolutely want to make sure it does a tie off. Or some people, even if you don't trim, they want to maintain a tie off because what if a machine operator goes in and trims it? 
if you don't have a um, a tie-in in place and they manually cut it with a pair of scissors, then it could unravel. Or if your customer does that, it could unravel. So you might want to keep your tie-off happening. But if you want to do all of those objects at once, you then can select all of them. They're all selected. Make sure it says after. And in this case, I never want it to trim. And I've now turned them all off. So I get the same result as above, but the difference is this is with lettering and lettering will always be inside. And these are individual objects and individual objects will always be after.